Okay, let's try that again. I have yet to get a hang of uh, this whole streaming Twitch thing. <laughs> it's very scary. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to be playing something a little different today. When I was a kid, my dad had bought a Macintosh Classic. And if you don't, anyone actually has never seen one of those things, it was one of these self-contained built-in units with a little 12-inch or 13-inch monochrome black and white screen, not even grayscale, but just straight up black and white. And by today's standards, it's a calculator. It couldn't do shit. But one of the things I had on that was some of this really old game, Secret of the Silver Blades. Now, this was a TSR gold box game. Now, there's a series of role-playing games that they produced, uh, pretty much tactics games. There's really, unfortunately, there wasn't really a huge amount of story available because of the limitations of the technology. This game shipped on two floppy disks. Now, these are the little three and a half quarter floppy disks. The entire game was self-contained in about three megabytes, three and a half megabytes total. So you can imagine there's really not a whole lot there, especially when you compare it to the three or four gigabytes that you see in like The Witcher or even uh, Baldur's Gate and things like that. Those shipped on, if I remember right, Baldur's Gate originally shipped on four, maybe five CDs. Each CD holds maybe 650 to 700 floppy disks worth of information. So yeah, by comparison, very simple games. But I have very fond memories of them. So I decided to pick one up, good old, goodoldgames.com, gog.com, and I thought I'd give it a try again. And I realized, because I'm such a complete and utter pack rat, that I actually still had my floppy disks. I still had my Secret of Silver Blades saved game from many years ago. So I loaded it up and holy shit, my, my characters are still here. Don't ask me how. Floppy disks normally don't last that long. It's a, it's a freaking miracle. So I decided to play through this and try to remember where I picked up or where I left off. And I remember I played a number of times because it's one of the things that you could do back then is you play through once, you use the same characters, play through again. You can even play through again yet another time if you want to max out your levels. You never maxed out in one sitting. So I'm going to bring you guys through Secret of the Silver Blades. Um, the save game point in this is a little towards the end-ish. Um, it's hard to say because it, it's a little bit freeform. But, uh, so there's still a fair bit to do, and but a lot has already been done. All right, so the characters I'm using are actually very well equipped already. Uh, probably more so than you would normally see. They're already max level. So this is really going to be a you know, just a demonstrate of the game and, and play through it for fun, not really for the, the challenge, because I've, I've already beaten this enough, too many times to count. Uh, one of the things I also did find, just for pure convenience sake, uh, this particular game was known for being a slog of repetitive, repetitive, repetitive combat. Uh, this does random encounters. Like, every 10 feet you take is another fight. And that's the kind of game it was, so that was intentional. But this particular version, this particular game in the series was really well known for it. So uh, what I enabled, I did enable a shortcut key to end combats quickly. Uh, and I'll probably be using that for the repetitive stuff. You know, I'll, I'll fight a few times so you guys can see the tactic system and how it pans out. Uh, important fights, obviously, I'll play through. But for just the, the, the repetitive slog, I'll be skipping through a lot. All right, so let's get done. Just to point it out here, um, what you see here is your party listing. And you can actually add, remove, and drop characters as you go throughout the game. Um, so one of the th common things to do is uh, you spin up a character, you level them up, you level them up, you level them up, and you remove them, which actually saves them. It stores them in a character vault, so to speak. Then you start up a whole new game and you add them back in. You know, this, so this experienced character actually starts playing from scratch and you get more experience and it builds up. One of the other things you have in here is one or two NPCs. You can have one NPC that you cannot control 
in your party. That's this Vala here. She is not mine to control. You'll notice she actually also has crap stats by comparison. Because my other characters are well above her in level and ability. Go figure. So I basically just gave her a bow. So she's using a fine long bow and some plus one arrows. Now the equipment in this game is kind of weird. It doesn't really follow traditional D&D kind of standards in the sense that I can just as easily find a plus five longsword sitting next to a crate of plus one arrows. It's a little weird. Some items are really restrictive, other items like, hey, here's a magic longsword, thank you for starting the game. It's like, what? Really? Okay. Uh, one thing to note, this game is the third in the series. Uh, out of four, if I remember correctly, there was uh, Pools of Radiance, Curse of the Azure Bonds, then Secret of the Silver Blades, and then Pools of Darkness, if I remember correctly. I could be mistaken. Um, so your characters actually start out, if you're building a whole new party, you actually start out at like level 9 or 11 or something like that, I forget which. And the max is out at level 15. Now, one of the features that existed back in the original AD&D world, this is 1st uh, edition, not even 2nd edition, but 1st edition AD&D, is the ability for humans to dual class. You don't see this anymore. Dual class, oh, actually, you, you do, it's just called something different. Uh, dual classing was you get your human, it's only available to humans, up to a certain class level, and then you decide to duel him into another class. They pick up that new class, but in the process, they lose all their experience, they lose all the abilities and knowledge from their previous class, and they're starting out fresh with one XP point, level one whatever class you just took. So I can have, like for example here, I had a level 14 paladin and I decided to dual class into fighter. And I'll explain why about that in a minute. So what happens is this character forgets that he who is a paladin and just becomes a fighter, a level 1 fighter. And you have to level him up as you normally would. You keep all the physical stats and your health points and things like that but you lose all the abilities. I don't get smites, I don't get lay on hands, I don't get uh, paladin immunities, weapon profession, nothing, nothing, none of that. You don't get that back until you exceed your previous level. So that's why you see a fighter 15, paladin 14. Now that was that's a weird combination, I was just kind of goofing around when I did that one. But more frequently what you see here is yeah, let me give you a better one. Ilonui, if anyone remembers uh, Sword, not Sword and Sword, uh, the Black Cauldron. Princess Ilonui. Ilonui, I think her pronunciation was. I never could figure that out. She started out her life as a ranger. One of the things in Rangers First Edition was you could actually cast magic spells while still wearing armor. Very, very important. She had a life experience of being a ranger up to level 14, and I decided to dual class her into a magic user. Now, there are no wizards, sorcerers, warlocks, there's none of that stuff. It's just a magic user. And as soon as she hit level 15, she remembered, oh, I used to be a ranger! So now, I have a level 15 magic user, maximum level, who can cast spells in armor and use a sword and use a shield. It's amazing. So my little dinky, rink-a-dink magic user, who normally, you know, falls over if you breathe on him, has negative 11 AC. Uh, when it comes to Thak, go, that's actually pretty good. And actually swings around a longsword versus giants, which is actually a plus three longsword. Sweet! And has 153 hit points. Most magic users, pure magic users, at even at max level, have like 73. Ah. And you see that kind of thing repeated, you know, Elliston was a cleric and a paladin, so a cleric is the priests of this system, you know, they're healers, so to speak. But I also made him a paladin so he could actually hold his own and fight when he's not healing. Because as everyone who's played D&D &D knows, the best way to 
heal or to keep people alive is to kill the other guy first. Yeah, Sonia is a cleric fighter. Vala, who's just a fighter. And Tass, who's a fighter thief. Tass, of course, that's a tassel off. Come on. Who doesn't know that reference? You're not watching the stream if you don't know that reference. Um, fighter thief, very classic. Now, this is an exception. Tass is a halfling, a hobbit, a kinder, if you will. This is multi-classing. First edition AD&D, &D, only the non-human races could multi-class, and one of the common, common issues with that was you were limited in the maximum XP you could get. Certain races had different XP caps. The reason for that is uh, Gary Gygax originally... Oh, sorry, I didn't even see you come in there. Hi, uh, WY guy, Y guy. Thank you for joining me. Uh, just doing a little recap here on how this system works. A little background story. It's a bit of a history lesson, really. Sit back and enjoy. Feel free to ask questions, believe me, because these old TSR games barely made sense. So what I was saying was the halflings, uh, Gary Gygax, back in the day when he first came up with uh, Dungeons and Dragons, which is uh, such a, a beautiful, wonderful thing that he did, uh, decided that he wanted primarily human-centric um, groups of uh, characters. It was just a, a design decision. So while you had elves and half-elves and dwarves eventually, uh, they were, um, as you say, gimped in a way. The, the different races had limitations on how high of a level they could train. Uh, one of the reasons for this is to explain why you don't have you know, elves who live hundreds of years why they don't just like completely dominate the world as level like 500 fighters you know, wouldn't make sense. So the non-human races are limited. Halflings, for example, can only reach level 15 fighter. They can't go any higher than that. But one of the quirks is thieves, which in of themselves, pure thieves, are actually very uh, challenging, I should say. Uh, they have issues. They actually can reach uh, a much higher level, so they're 15 slash 18, but that is that. So let us begin. Uh, I, forewarning, the sound effects on this are absolutely atrocious, so I'll be playing some background music instead. Um, if you just hear random, what sounds like my computer grunting, that's actually the sound. It's actually meant to be that. It's supposed to simulate the way computer speakers used to sound before they actually had speakers. Think uh, Casio watches. It's about the quality you should expect. Be resolute on your path. A victory is a victory for this town. I had saved this game at the training hall, the ye old training hall. Because that's right. Yep, do you? training and character management. Yes. So this game is interesting. One of the newest features in, in this series, as, as sad as they sound now, was this 3D view. Normally, you're moving around in a view like this. It's grid-based. You move one square at a time. You can actually see my coordinates down here. Four over, seven down, something like that. And you had to navigate the whole way. And as I mentioned, that uh, grunting my computer is doing is the actual sound of me moving. It sounds really horrible. This is actually normal for the game. So let's see. I have Hall of Training, the new Vertigris Vault. Uh, the particular town I'm in is New Vertigris. The Temple of Gond. The Mentor Mermaid Tub. Let's have a drink. For heroes such as yourselves, the drinks are on the house. What's your pleasure? Have a drink. What will you drink? Uh, mead, of course, because you always have mead. You overhear a conversation. You record it as journal entry 30. So one of the quirks on this is because of the limitation of the medium, you could not actually cram all these journal entries and texts and descriptions in the actual game. There wasn't enough storage. So they gave you a separate manual that you had to flip through and look up what they were actually going to try to tell you. 
So this one, Journal Entry 3, is the Overhear Conversation. So many gems down in that mine, and no way to get them! Life ain't fair! Times are tough, sir. Times are tough. Uh, let's have another drink. Why not? Wine. You overhear conversation. And you record it in Journal Entry 12. Journal Entry 12. The Old Man's Tale of the Temple. First long ago, that the old town was a thriving place. The mine was there and then too. Folks was ruled by a fellow worshipped Tyre. He thought the miners were deserving of Tyre's protection. Some of them folks around here say that the temple can still be found. Only oh, those of stout hearts will try, though. Things buried so long tend to harbor ghosts that don't like disturbing. I think I've had enough to drink. Yeah. Because, uh, I've already been to that temple. And yes, there are ghosts. It's actually kind of cool. Alright. So where I had actually left off in the adventure was the basic premise of the game, of the adventure. It's actually very straightforward. Um, you're summoned to this town, buck naked by the way, to, to explain away why they took all your gear from uh, previous saved games. And the town's being overrun by monsters, as you one as one expects in these kind of games. And you have to go find out where they're coming from and stop them. You find out ultimately that, hey, there's an old castle buried in a glacier. And all the monsters are coming from a mine that dug too deep and is buried, dug under the glacier. Oh, funny that. Let's go check it out. So in order to get through the glacier, I had to go through the mines. I had to go through the ruins to get to the mines. Okay, once I'm in the mines, I had to get through the glacier. So that's where I left off. So there's a little bit of a teleporting system going on here. So we're just going to take advantage of that. There's a little more to this, but I'm just expediting a little bit here. Okay, I'm in the glaciers. Now, in when you're actually in dungeons, you see this overview map is fucking useless. So you stay in first view. Um, different areas are a little more complex, but in this particular game, it's very straightforward. There's really not that many places to go. So I'm just gonna traverse the only way that I can move. Oh, monsters approach. What do I do? Uh, attack, because that's what I'm here for. Kill things and take their loot. And this is the combat system. Uh, incidentally, I'm not using the mouse at all for this game. This is primarily a mouse driven, a uh, keyboard driven system. So I'm just using the uh, numeric keyboard here for the most part. Alright, so I have wargs. And, you know, just as a point of reference, those are not the right graphics for wargs. Wargs are giant bulls, they're not black dogs. Griffins, because of course there's naturally griffins in the middle of a glacier. Like I said, it's a bit of a combat slug. But I'm here to make sense. So this is Palin. Or Tass, rather. Badong! Malamber is going to cast a fireball. Here's my spell list. Fireball, good old fashioned fireball. One of the undocumented features in this game is the ability to center your spell, which was, did not exist in the previous games, and you had to really guess as far as where they're actually going to affect. A lot of times you end up holding yourself up. And holy shit, that's loud. Let me save your ears and turn that off a bit. Now, there's no actual game volume control in the system. So I'm kind of having to finagle this with the streaming software, OBS. So if it's not perfect, you'll forget, hopefully you'll forgive me for that. There's not really much I can do about it. So the way this works is I'm actually kind of running into the target. It causes them to, to attack. I, you know, I actually do have the speed way up, so 
Maybe we'll try to turn that down a little bit. There's really not much detail to it. It's basically just saying, hey, you swung, you missed, or you hit. How much damage did you do? That's really it. There, there's no real variation on that whatsoever. Now the reason some of these guys are attacking more than once per round is different classes attack more frequently than others. You know, fighters, paladins, rangers, they're all martial classes. They focus on fighting, so they hit more times per round. They're better fighters. Or it's things like thieves or wizards or whatever, they, they only attack once around. To your battle? No. The party has found no treasure. Meh. And that's the kind of combat that I'll be skipping uh, because it's just repetitive, it serves no purpose, and it just. it's a slog. It's a slog. They're there literally just to give you experience points, but my characters are already maxed out, so it's not an issue. Alright, uh, west or east? Uh, I think I'm gonna go east. I don't know why, but I think that's the way I need to go, I'm not sure. This is the kind of system where following one hand side of the wall is actually a valid method of getting through this. So, when in doubt, just keep going the same right turn, right turn, right turn, right turn, you'll eventually get there. There really is no three, third dimensional aspect to this game whatsoever, like that just did not exist that back then. Monsters approach, attack! That's not the command I wanna chip. <laughs> I hit something I didn't want to hit. Oops. Sorry. Let's see if we can't uh get us back there really quick. When you know where you're going, it's actually, uh... You get used to controlling it like this very quickly and accurately, uh, just by spamming the, the keyboard pad. If you know where you're going, it's great. Ah, that's what the key I was looking for. So the... Uh, what? Yeah. So this is one of the interesting things. Um, platinum is the currency. Platinum, gold, copper, silver, etc. You can end up carrying so much platinum that you can't function. Uh, it just bogs you down, it weighs you down. To the point where you actually can't move because you're carrying so much money. Um, great problem to have, right? Yeah. But the problem is this particular game really has no outlet for that money. There's really nothing for you to buy. Just mundane weapons and everything you have is, is better than what you could possibly find in a merchant. The only exception to that is a handful of magical scrolls that your actual mages learn themselves very quickly. Oh, rubble. I don't want rubble. It's a blocked passage. Uh, and some wands, but you know, as with normal D&D, wands are very weak by comparison to the actual spell. So it's really no 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 point. I have a nasty suspicion that I was supposed to go south of that first uh, first branch. Oh well, I'll find out in a second. Yep, I was supposed to go back, take a left at Albuquerque. I don't want to actually flee because it actually throws me off quite a bit. It changes your directions. It makes you move away from where you were. And I've actually fled before and not realized that I got turned around and just ended up going like all the way back to the start without realizing it. It was horrible when I'd realized. Especially when you consider normally you have to fight through all of these.
I'll, I'll fight occasionally just to break up the pace, but uh, right now I just want to get out of these ice caves because this is such an annoying area. Monsters approach, what do I do? I'm going to attack them. Of course I'm going to attack them. They're dragons. Why wouldn't I attack them? That's what you do. They're there. Charge! Should I run up and swing him? No. I'm going to cast a spell instead. Uh, stinking Cloud. So there's the chance of completely and utterly paralyzing your target. Fortunately, it's an extremely short-range spell. Oh, that hurt. You shot my hair! Yes, he did just throw a boulder at me. Longsword versus giants does extra points versus giants, but I have to get through these dragons first. Oh, the ice breath is hurting. Uh, delay, delay, delay. You get the hell out of the way. That giant sword I mentioned. I don't know if you can actually catch it flying by, but they're doing, you know, mostly they're usually doing about 20 damage or so. The guys with the anti giant swords are doing about 48, 38, something like that. So, yeah, it, it helps. Okay, Bell, no, I don't want to continue the battle. No, I don't want your treasure because you don't have anything good. Now, yeah, I did take some hits down there. I'm in yellows, you know, 101 hit points, but I have so many hit points on these guys that it just is completely irrelevant for the most part. Unless I do something truly mon monumentally stupid. So I'm going to follow my original advice, which is just to follow one wall. I can follow the right-hand wall, so I'll make all right-hand turns and see where I go. approach. Now the the story reason for why all these things are down here is the the castle trapped on the glacier is actually uh, ruled by the big bad evil guy and these guys, all these uh, monsters are down here to guard the, the entrance. So that's why they're making my life so hard because they're trying to block the way. Ah! So you gotta be careful. You see <laughs> you gotta be careful. You can do what I just did, which is to actually spin myself around without realizing it. That's why the compass is there. It's this uh, little compass right here. East. The crevices that I'm in are ultimately west to east, so as long as I'm heading east, I'm more or less going the right direction. Dead bodies are strewn along this corridor. Uh-oh. Could have killed them before I got here. Monsters approach. Well, fuck you, monsters. Just griffins. I'm slowing down a little bit because usually when you see a message like that, the whole dead bodies is strewn across the floor, it's usually an indication of something coming up. Tuny Bell? No. Exit? No. Thank you. There's a sharp command frustrating us. You destroyed our homes! <coughs> Ow. <laughs> oh, that's a whole lot of Mastodon. Tell me, 
Mr. Mastodon. How do you like fire? You are frost giants after all. Clerics in this game really don't have anything in the way of uh, area of effect attacks, so you're better off just attacking with them. Now, mages, on the other hand, they're all about the AoE. You'll notice the way I'm positioning this is actually very specific. Um, the three corners this one, this one, and this one on each side don't get affected by this spell. Oh, that's beautiful. That really cleared the word. Uh, and just a reminder, you know, I have very good equipment on these guys. There's a reason why they're missing most of those. Normally this would have been a hell of a fight. Why are you using a sword, Val? You're not even using a sword, you're using your bare hands, what the fuck? I gave you a bow for a reason. Let's see what they have, just in case. No, just money. Money's useless in this game. Soft laughter. Thank you! You saved us from the necessity of removing those guards ourselves. Goodbye! They attack! Ha ha! I'm gonna fight through this one because you guys haven't seen casters fights yet. They're significantly worse than uh, you know cat fights. They actually are really kind of fucking nasty. So one of the prime ways to deal with casters is the silence spell. So in order to cast a spell, you need to be able to clearly speak your spells. And if you're silenced can't speak, so therefore you can't cast. The other way to deal with, with casters in this game is to damage them. If you've taken damage your turn, you cannot cast a spell. You've lost your concentration. So it's very important to hit, even if it's for one point of damage, it's very important to hit every caster every round. Good. Now, I just targeted against the martial guy, because they have uh, lower will saves and such spell saves in this game actually. But everyone next to him is silenced, so this caster and this caster can't do anything. Now I'm gonna take some hits from this. Oh wait, no, it's right. Eh. So, a little quirk here. All my guys have a ring of invisibility. Think Lord of the Rings Hobbit ring. Uh, until they make an offensive move, they're actually invisible. Uh, mechanically, in this game, what that means is uh, they don't get attacks of opportunity when they move around. Cone of cold or confusion. Oh man, I thought I had a lightning bolt. Dang it. Man, that, that didn't do nearly as much as I was hoping it would do. far more concerned about these casters than I am the, the melee types. Once the casters are down, the rest is just mop up, really. Just focus fire, take one down at a time. Said, just take down one at a time until you till there's no more targets left. Bella, you have a 
a bow, fucking use it. It's a problem with the AI, the NPCs, as like most games, if you think they were bad, like, in recent history, holy shit, they were really bad back now. Back then. They really just had like one simple command, and that was to attack with whatever is in hand. If they're next to you, attack melee. If you don't have a melee weapon, well, you're punching them. Don't guard. A uh, guard, by the way, is uh, like a ready in action to attack whoever comes next to you. So, you st ah, I didn't mean to do that. So, just tell everyone to guard until it gives me the option to end combat. Take items. Now, one of the challenges, uh, probably what you might consider a good problem to have, is identifying this really sweet gear out of the piles of crap. Now, I can see a potion in here. Now, just with familiarity with the game, I know that potions are really rare. So, these last three items are actually probably something special. So, I'm going to take those three and leave all the other crap, because again, there's no point in having money in this game, so there's really no reason to collect crap gear. In a real D&D &D game, you know, Pathfinder, Dungeons & Dragons 5e or something, yeah, you collect freaking everything and you sell it to whoever was willing to give you something for it. Because you actually have something to spend your money on in those games. This, not so much. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to encamp, and they have a convenient little command here called Fix, which will make all my spellcasters cast all the curative spells that they have and then rememorize them automatically. Uh, it's just a great little automatic way to heal up, so to speak. Previous games, you actually had to manually cast your heal spells, manually memorize them again, and sleep. It was really freaking annoying. I just came that way. Damn it. No. Wait. So I just came down from the south. I want to go east. Based on that little ambush there, I have a suspicion that I'm coming up to the bottom of this area. And I'm actually I'm looking for a very particular uh pattern to these walls. That's not what I was looking for. Bye bye, because you're annoying to fight. Thank you. No. Yeah, this is it. Okay. So I'm actually going to save my game here, because those stairs, I believe, are the way into the castle. There's a teleporter to the north. Good. They're giving me an opportunity to go back to town to sell my shit. Where is this? Alright, bottom left, center. Okay, so this area, by the way, is the Well of Knowledge. It's not going to tell me anything actually useful, but I'll stop in there just to, to say hi. The Well requests gems. Do you give it some? Sure. I don't have any because I don't collect loot. And the Well tells me to fuck off. Come back when you can afford my services. Well of Knowledge uh, is basically a, a mechanic for this game that is a source of what the hell do I need to do next. You collect gems, which are actually pretty damn common in this game. Uh, the whole concept of it uh, revolves around the, a gem mine. You feed it some gems, it gives you a journal entry that basically tells you, I was like, oh, you should go check this out. Thanks. Alright, so I had just picked up some magical items. So I'm gonna go to the armory over here and get them identified. I'm gonna pool my resources here. Uh, the fact that I don't have a share button probably means I don't have any actual money on me. So I'm gonna go to the vault and get some gems or money or something. Withdraw. Take money. Platinum however much it'll let me. Overloaded. 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 
reloaded. Fine, pass, you take some. Platinum. 5,000. Overloaded. 1,000. 100. Alright, that, that should be enough to identify three items. Exit, thank you. Go into the armory. Yes. Pool your money, so it's uh, basically everyone dump empty out your pockets so you can all buy things collectively. I'm going to view my items here. Now I have a scale mail. I'm going to identify that. That was a scale mail plus one, which is useless. This morning star plus two is also useless. Potion of extra healing. Also, useless. Hmm, that's weird. Okay. What is Val using? Banded, peri, frame, boot. Someone give her a freaking sword, will you? Alright, I need to give her a weapon because she's going to insist on fighting anyway. Take item. I'm sure I got a sword in here somewhere. There we go. Overloaded. With what? How can you be overloaded? You have 18 strength. Take the damn sword. Ugh. Take items. Take. Thank you. I think it's because she's an NPC. She can't grab straight from the, the bank like that. So I'll exit. I'll look at Tess's information. And I'll trade to Vala. She's overloaded, but she's not really carrying anything. What the hell? Oh. Vala, you, you hoarder. Get rid of all that crap. It's useless. So, one of the annoyances of the NPCs in these games is because you can't control them, you can't really control their gear. There you go. Now you actually have a sword to use. Thank god. Okay, let's go back. Welcome back! I hope your day has been successful! Rest yourselves if you are wary. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I kind of do need to. Because I use some spells, so I need to memorize. It's one of the annoyances. Uh, the later games actually got a little better about this, but... Every time you cast a spell, you have to manually select which spells to memorize every time. Like, it doesn't keep that list for you. Let's see, I believe I used a stinking cloud, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Cone kill. Uh, Hope Monsters is more effective in the long run. Okay, yes. Memorize. Use the silence of a memorite. And then you rest. Get all your spells back. Save the game, of course. So, one of the things in this game is uh, death was actually a real royal pain in the butt. Your characters would actually take a permanent con damage. Uh, if they fail to check when you resurrect them, so you can generally just reload your game when you die. Some might consider that cheap. It's like, oh, hey, the character died, you should roll up a new character instead of... Yeah. These games really didn't... That really wasn't a thing. Okay, so we're entering... You've entered a frost giant village. That, that doesn't sound... Damn. They they don't like me. Um, talk to them? Maybe I keep working for the Black Circle and melting the glacier. Attack. I don't want to fight you guys. Arr. Can't you give peace a chance? The thing with giants and all variations of D, &D to keep in mind is that they're really easy to hit, 
They have a crap ton of hit points, and they hit really hard. But, if you have high, high AC, they don't really pose much of a challenge to you. Especially if you happen to be using long swords versus giants to completely devastate them. not. You found treasure! I doubt it. Yeah, I mean, by comparison, like, I just fought maybe 10 giants and they dropped 17,000 platinum. Like, the economy is ridiculous. If that was a Pathfinder game, I'd be sitting there like, holy fuck! 117,000 platinum. That's 175,000 gold pieces. If this was Pathfinder, I'd be being very awkward right now. Alright, so I'm in a frost giant city. Great. Boulders rain down upon you from the holes in the sides of the crevasses. Shit, they're throwing rocks down at us. Doors blocked. Bash it in. Bash it more. Bash it again. There we go. Guards charge out of the two side doors. Um, I'm gonna skip these because it's just, uh, it, it's really redundant fighting. There's nothing special about it. It's just more of the same. Take a flight of stairs? I don't want to take a flight of stairs. I want to go right up the middle. Bash it! Bash it! Bash it! Bash it! Bash it, damn it! Retreating to the south. After them! There's patrol. Talk to them. Kill them before they get us all! You're the one to attack me, dude! I'm, I'm just a sightseer in these frozen caverns under a glacier swarming with monsters. Yeah. So, frankly, I mean, guys, like, death to the Black Circle. I, 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 I killed them too. I'm only hitting you because you're attacking me. There's a patrol, another patrol. Talk to him. Talking is not working. Alright, actually, Val is a little hurt. So I'm gonna take a second to fix here. Save A. Yep. Move. Went to the east. Did I say the east or did I say the west? Cooper Monsters. Approaching. Bribe them. They don't look like they're in a bribing mood. Gotcha. Bye bye. Standing in front of you is the Frost Giant King and his personal guard. He eyes you with blind fury as he speaks and as you record his speech as Journal Entry 15. Meeting the Frost Giant King. So, not content with melting away our home, you carry the war directly to us. We have held these crevasses for generations. We will not surrender them to the likes of you. Look to your lives. I am prepared to die. Are you? 
What do you do? Talk. Hey, dude, I, I'm just looking for the bathroom. You explain that you do not work for the Black Circle, and he balks at your statements. As he raises his hand to signal the attack, a sentry bursts into the room and shouts, The Black Circle and their fire giant dogs have followed these humans in! They've penetrated our defenses! <laughs> penetrated. The king looks at you and says, If you and the Black Circle are enemies, then prove it! Stop them and I will help you. Agree to help, of course, because that's what goody goodies do. You charge down the hall with some of the king's guard behind you. When you get halfway down the hall, you see them. You clash together in battle! Oh, fire giants! Is that, I think they're fire giants. Yes, fire giants! Blazing red beards that look like they're filled with embers still on fire and skin dark as suit. Uh, oh, that's right. I usually use fireball. <laughs> oh well. We're in for a bit of a slog here. Uh, I might be able to get a good one off. Cast Cone of Cold. Ooh, they really don't like that. That was a good one. Can we get in here? Yes. Good. Cast. Cone of gold. Oh, I'll get to that. Oh well. The only ones who are actually in danger here are the other the frost giants. My guys have no problem taking these guys down. Delay. You get the fuck out of here. Cast... Go to gold! Nasty fight's over. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. The Black Circle Mages and Fighters follow up the attack. Uh, this is gonna get annoying. Charm. Charm. Cute little trick. You charm your enemy to be your friend. Oh, none of it worked. Great. Silence! Silence, I say! Oh, this is gonna be close. Damn it, didn't work. He's casting! He's casting! Stop him! Uh, no, I got a flame strike in there somewhere. There you go. There we go. Ah, shit, 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 Oh, good. Good, 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 good. Flush the stone. Instant kill. Reload your game if that hits. Go 
good old fireball. It's iconic for a reason. Cast? Hmm, I wonder, should I cast fireball? Yeah, I should try that. Fireball. Yeah, let's just mop up. Pop pow! Pop pow! Oh, look, even the fire giants hit. These guys can't be so great. What are these anyway? Oh, they're legionnaires. Yeah. They have a lot of hit points, but they don't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, I'm just gonna delay so one of my guys can get out of the way. Same thing. Damn it! Maverick, where the hell are you? Doesn't look good, Goose. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look any better than this. Alright, I'm, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> no. Take items. Is there anything standing out? Uh... Kinda... Kinda, kinda not. I'll take those last three just to be sure. I doubt it's anything useful. No. The king thanks you. Oh, this should be good. Alright, so we're gonna take items. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Potions I couldn't give a crap about, honestly. Cards ask you which direction you want to go. I want to go to the castle. Oh. When you look closer, you see the faces and bodies of monsters frozen in the ice. Oh. <coughs> that actually hurts to do that voice. I gotta stop doing that. Yeah, it's actually like... <clears throat> Time's it. It's actually almost 11 o'clock here, or else I'd be drinking. I, I, I have a bedtime. Anyway, um, okay, that was a little freaky. So, in camp, I'm gonna fix myself. I'm gonna memorize my fireballs, because I have a feeling I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna want them. Charm. Kind of cold. Memorize, yes, of course, that's why I said memorize them. Thank you. Go. Memorize. You know, I'll always be said that level 3 is the most useful spell level of all time. And it's always going to be true. There's just so many good options in level 3 lightning bolt, fireball, haste, blink. It's amazing. I'm not even going to bother with the rest of them. Memorize, 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 save A, no, save B, no. I'm a little paranoid about the save games. Okay. Oh look, this monster's frozen in the ice, haha. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna get a ton of random encounters that are gonna be nasty. Like hydras, just wandering around. Boom! Boom! A cloud giant! Oh! Just so, just so you know, the uh, hierarchy of. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Giants clans. You have Hill Giants, which are kind of like your, you know, eating off of grubs and, you know, living in caves kind of giants. Then you have 
um, frost giants, then fire giants, then cloud giants. Cloud giants are the uh, aristocracy of the giant realms. A cloud giant is talking to frost giants. He sees you and screams, There! There are the ones who are melting your haven! The frost giants and Macedon's attack. But I, I just... Fuck you. So, yeah. White dragons attack. I don't want to fight dragons right now. Oh, dear lord. Um... Huh. This could get interesting. Now, normally dragons don't actually pose that much of a threat in D&D computer games. It's the, uh, the actual role-playing game where they will completely and utterly destroy you. It is said that there is no more fearsome foe than a prepared dragon. Catch one sleeping? Uh, you can do something. You can drop a select on its head or, you know, annoy it enough so it goes away. But yeah, in this game, dragons are kind of not all that. The the things that will screw you over in this particular game, Secret of Silver Blades, are the uh, iron golems. Because they can only be hurt by plus three weapons. Magic doesn't work on them. So they're very much an end game thing. Like if you encounter them before you have really good gear, you cannot win. There's nothing you can do to them. Now these Hydras can be kind of fearsome. There are 12 headed Hydras and they attack you a dozen times every round so they can really get nasty. But I'm nastier. These are just random encounters still. The, the problem that you have in AD&D that you really have to watch out for is not really the straight up damaging creatures. Like, you can deal with that. But you have to watch out for the status effects. There's a lot of things out there that are save or die. Like, this is the kind, this is the era that that term came to be. A Medusa looks at you. Roll save? No? Or you're dead. Hmm? Oh. A cockatrice? Pecks at your toe? Make a save. You die. What? Okay. A basilisk? Well, oh, fuck. <clears throat> Poison? You're dead. Sly living? You're dead. Death spell? You're dead. Like, yeah. Those are the things you have to watch out for. Monstrous attack! Didn't even get any warning, so fuck you. <laughs> So this area shouldn't be that long. Oh, these are fun. Remoraz. Remoraz. Burst through the wall ahead and attack! By the way, animation in this game was a... Holy shit, it's moving! Oh my god! Interesting little fact. Remoraz have a chance to swallow you whole. Oh, and by the way... Save or die. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna try to kill him very quickly. So he doesn't gobble us up for dinner. Whoops, wrong button. Eh. I really don't feel like we're throwing a save. That was actually the most painful aspect of this game when playing through. Aside from all the random combats that you just had to, to deal with, was the, uh... Because of that, you really didn't want to have to do anything over again. Because every time you saved your game, like, you'd have to redo it again. And you just... it, it was disheartening. It's like, you mean I gotta go through that again? Oh, fighters and our raid across the corridors ahead. Uh, wait. Fighters prepare for battle. 
Wait, 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 Parley. They will be destroyed. Well, duh, we can attack. Because we're murder hobos, and that's what we do. Uh, I feel like this is actually a battle battle, so I'm going to go ahead and play through this. That's a whole lot of legionnaires, man. Oh, these are lords. They're scary. The Dreadguard. Oh, they... Alright, so give you a little background story on this. So, the glacier is actually the home of a lich. The lich is the big bad evil guy. Spoilers! Sorry, I don't mind spoiling a game from the freaking 70s and 80s. Um, so, Trapped in Ice was a curse by his brother to seal him away because the brother didn't have the heart to kill him. Yada, yada, yada. The lich's original guards or the Dread Guard. And if you remember, as we entered this area, there were scenes of monsters frozen in ice. They, the, Legi the Black Circle Legionnaires have been thawing these guys out. So these guys are actually pretty friggin' nasty. They need to die. They need to die in fire. Ooh, that was a good one, too. the spell so, so much. So I have to be careful because I'm not actually hitting that mage in the corner. So I'll need to do something to make sure I get him. Uh, you don't have any ranged options. You do. No, you don't. Do you? Do you have a bow? You don't have a bow. Damn it! So the casters in this game have a tendency to not really destroy you, they just have a tendency to really, 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 really be annoying. Uh, yeah, I gotta cast. Next, Slay Living. Hopefully the range on this is long enough, I don't remember what the range is. It's not long enough, so... Find someone with a lot of hit points and try to take him out. There we go. You think you have something? No? There. Uh, silence might be in range. Whole monster shit. Shit, shit. No, that's not good. That's really, 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 really not good. When you're held, you're paralyzed. And when you're paralyzed, any. Hit is an instant kill. Yeah. Now I, I I can recover from that. It, it's okay. I have raised that in, in all that jazz. But that kind of sucked. Okay. We need to do some mass damage here. So that mage is gonna fuck me over. Come to Papa. I love this spell. Maybe that is particularly stupid about it. So the chokes and gags is the same thing as being, uh, paralyzed. So, just a general concept, that was me being really, 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 really stupid and arrogant. I got two of my guys killed because I was being... Stupid and arrogant. I don't think they actually had anything particularly useful, though. No. I'll see if I can sneak in a fix, but. 
two fixes later. Uh, let's see if anyone got permanently damaged by that. I think Tass's wisdom was always low. Oh, whatever. Unfortunately, this game has no load feature, so you actually have to exit the game and restart it in, in order to <laughs> to get back in. All right, so let us continue forth. The ice groans around you. It's one of the things I actually did not care for about this game is they give you those random tidbits and you make you think, it's like, oh shit, there's something bad happening. It's just flavor. Castle guards attack. And I really don't feel like fighting through that slug again, so they attack and they die. Come, a come upon dead frost giants. Monsters attack. Monsters die. Yeah, I, I know I'm cheating. I'm fully aware of that. I just really do not feel like fighting through the slog of manual combat with random encounters, just trishes and giggles. Cold wind blasts through the crevasse. Ooh, an intersection. Intersections are actually important. It's found treasure. Island Wee notices that the corridor to the east is the most heavily used. Island Wee is a ranger and can follow tracks, so eastward ho! You hear water dripping. Ooh. The ice groans around you. They're melting it. They're melting the ice. They're getting their buddies out. Come upon more dead frost giants. Got some guards. Die, guards, die. Right, I'm gonna save this because I have a feeling I'm coming up to a big ass fight in a second. No, don't quit to DOS, thank you. Come. Uh, yeah, let's cast some buffs. I feel like I could use it. Now, enlarge is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spell because it actually makes you bigger. Not, not physically as far as the uh, game system is concerned. But increases your strength and uh, how hard you hit, which is amazing. Dark skin. Uh, yeah, blink is combat, so I'll leave that alone. Mirror image. Elston will create bless. Prayer. I don't actually know what it does, I think it just gives like a plus one to attack or something like that. Or helps your saves or something like that. Never really paid too close attention to it in this particular iteration. Those effects have changed uh, version to version throughout all D&D, so it's hard to say exactly what they do. Monsters attack. Monsters die. I recognize this place. There, to the east. That corridor leads to a teleporter. Oh, well, that's good. Alienware says the corridors to the east and southeast seem to have had a lot of traffic between them. Remora's burst through the wall ahead and attack. Ooh. Please don't eat me whole. I don't taste good. I'm made of all gristle and, and fat. Actually, gristle and fat's kind of tasty. Um, just don't eat me. Thank you. Right, we'll go east and see if we can't find that teleporter. I know this place. It used to be the stable area for the Castle of the Twins. Castle Guards attack. So I gotta ask, if there's a teleporter here, 
Why haven't all these guards taken out the town? Come on, where's that teleporter? It's gotta be around here somewhere. Teleporter is guarded by three more Moraz. Attack! Attack! You back out to make room for the battle. Of course. So, yeah. Let's see if I can't uh, hold monsters. Because that'll make this battle go a lot easier if I can. Hold monsters is a paralysis spell. And if they're paralyzed... Uh, they can't actually do anything. They can't protect themselves. Yes! Yes! Awesome. One shot kill. One punch man. <laughs> From behind. Yeah, I got some really loose backstabbing rules in this edition. It's really hard to protect. Especially when something has a giant head like that. Here's Sense Glowing Gateway. Do you enter? Yes! Alright, where am I? Area. Okay. I'm over there. Go back to town. Hey, where's the mayor? Get some of this stuff identified. A few items. Oh, I should. Pull. I don't think I actually have any items whatsoever. Any gold, rather. Oh well. I don't really use daggers anyway, so... Oh well. Oof. Oof. Plus threes. Plus fours. Plate mail plus three. Damn. I wonder. That's it. Uh, negative eleven. Nope. Banded mail still better. Three longsword plus four shield plus four, but I need the silver shield. The reason for that, by the way, oh, plate mail plus four, sweet. The reason for the silver shield is because it's silvered. It reflexes, reflexes, reflex gaze attacks, medusae, basilisks, cockatrices, things like that. Uh, yeah, I should share that. Um, I don't think anyone else had anything, right? Now. Now okay. come. Alright, so back to the castle! I'm gonna throw Alter Order. I'm gonna throw Valet in the back. And hopefully she'll actually use the damn bow. Monsters attack again. Monsters die again. A little repetitive. What can you do? can do is turn off the search function. I'm sure that's not helping my cause any. But I don't want to miss anything either. Uh, the search function is basically uh, I'm taking my time to search every room as I pass through it. So like if there is a little nude on the door or 
footprints to be found, something like that. Those will only show up on my screen if I'm searching while moving. Fortunately, it takes ten times as long to actually move through the square, so I tend to attract more attention like that. Bella, would you stop? Oh, you know what? I should have given that shield to Fala. Dang it. Uh, where are you, Bella? Take items. Take one of the shields already. Cloud giants and white dragons are standing watch over several hydras that have just recently been thawed out of the ice. What do you do? Attack them, of course! Uh, let's see what the lay of the land is here. This sounds like it's a nasty one. Uh, yeah, and I wouldn't be wrong. Okay. So, bring out the fireballs, boys. Uh, delay. Cast. Fireball. Fireball first. Get the cloud giants. I don't believe they're casters. So I don't have to worry about that. Um... Let's see. Get as square as any. I'm only a little worried about the white dragons because uh, they do have an AoE breath attack that I'd rather not have to heal. wouldn't really... I'm in no danger, but I just don't want to have to deal with the inconvenience of healing up from it. Dragons are guard. Ooh. Red dragons can be a little nasty. So you're gonna. Uh, I don't have lightning bolt on this character. Dragons, they're hard to affect by spells. So one of the reasons, for reference, one reason I'm not worried about their breath attack is all my characters have rings of fire resistance right now. So I'm actually immune to them. They still hit like a truck though. Okay. Oh damn, I didn't see if it was southwest. Uh, when in doubt. Follow the right hand wall rule. Like, I vaguely recall the layout of this place. And I, I do know that the where I need to go is in the extreme southeast corner, so I'm just assuming. And I assumed wrong! Because assuming makes an ass out of you and me. Once 
I actually get to the castle proper, I think I'm gonna wind it up. I know it's a short stream, but it's actually kind of late for me. And the weird weather in New York, it's actually quite warm right now. Um, between my computer equipment and the positioning of this office, it's actually quite uncomfortable. And I, I don't really like eating or drinking on the stream, so... Oh well. Not with the webcam up, anyway. Hello, ominous rumble. Rumble? Hmm. Learn something new. A low, ominous rumble comes across from the east. I'd really be afraid if it was a ruminal, but a rumble I can handle. The noise is louder and has resolved into roars and unintelligible shouts. Uh, yeah, so save. <laughs> Q. Castle guards attack, and castle guards are gonna die. Alright, so, if I remember right, there's a really nasty... Notice there's the many heavy objects of dragging the quarter to the north. Heavy objects. I kind of want to check that out, because I don't know what that would be. Covered with the bodies of giants, men, and monsters. The men are all Black Circle and their allies. Oh! 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 That's just... Coins, though. I don't fucking care about coins. Let's see if anything stands out. No? Good. Great. Climb over the bodies. If you want to picture this, I just turned around a corner and found a pile of ice giants and mastodons and black circle corpses and I'm literally crawling over them right now to get through this tunnel funky it's a shame these as much as a, it's a real shame that these games didn't have the, the capacity to like really flesh out those kind of descriptions uh, and I, I don't necessarily mean graphics I know a picture speaks a million a thousand words but they, they didn't have the capacity to even just put in a, a block of text, really. I don't want gold. I don't want it. I don't want it. Holy crap, there's a lot of guards. I don't want gold. I want to find out what's at the end of this corridor. <laughs> Just let me get through. I remember... F I, I definitely remember this now. Or at least an aspect of this. I remember just how freaking annoying this section was. So every two feet was another attack. for nothing. Oh, are you kidding me? Really? Thank God for that fucking cheat code. Seriously. Like, that would have really pissed me off. If I had to fight that many combats in a row for nothing. Okay. The noise is extremely loud. Cloud giants are dragging bodies to the quarter behind you. White dragons follow them. The giants drop their burdens and attack. They want fresh meat. They don't want icicles from frozen food. Uh, let's just see if there's actually anything significant about this fight. If not, I'm just gonna skip. No. Alright, I'm just gonna skip. Items? Ooh. This is actually special items. Items. Take, 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 take. No. Huge white dragons charge upon you now. 
The noises of battle fills the crevasses. I'm coming up to a really nasty, 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 nasty fight. I remember this. I'm gonna save. No. Red dragons come flying down the corridor at you. Don't you have? Oh, ring of wizardry, not wing of resistance. Yeah, that. and look pretty. Ah! Damn it. I gotta fix him. He took con damage too, damn it. Ugh! So what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably, after the stream ends, I'll probably reload and just uh, fly through this section again. Because you, you don't want to take permanent con damage like that. It's normally a reload event, but I don't have to close the program and reopen it during a stream. So I'll fix that myself later. Okay, here's the big nasty. You see giants, dragons, and the black circle being held off by a single man. Vala exclaims, That's Oswald! Has he survived this long? The Cloud Giant sees you and cries out a warning. He and some of his allies create a rear guard and attack. And this is where things get a little messy. Fireball! Give me all the fireballs. Oh, actually no, this fight's easy. It's the next one, I think. Someone, yay for you. The Black Circle break off their attack on Oswolf and charge. See, this is. I don't know if you saw, but they actually attacked without giving me a chance to prepare anything. That's how this game and actually the series in general, try to make it more difficult for you, is they don't give you a chance to recover. Now, unfortunately, I got casters in here, and that's going to cause all sorts of issues for me. So I need to make a point of at least damaging them every round. Even if it's not for a lot.
Fusion's a fun one. Uh, randomly causes them to possibly attack the person right next to them. Gotta be careful with the placement. Awesome. Actually, cast it down here so I can remember what the range of it is. Ah, okay. <clears throat> when in doubt, magic missile, it's always a favorite. Painful guys. Fireball left. Let's use the hold monsters. I've got a bunch of those and don't have to memorize them again right away. treasure. Well, this one I think I will actually look through. A fight like that's gotta be nasty. I don't think uh, overloaded, right? Next person up. Uh, Tess. Dagger, 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 dagger. Plate mail along with shield. I'll show the wealth. So I have a bunch of uh, identifying to do. A single man who is fighting before you has disappeared. Oh look, Val has seven hit points. Yikes. Fix that, please. Thank you. Save as B, because I don't want to overwrite A. You step over the remains of the... Tr uh. A spirit rises from the ground to meet you. Vala recognizes as the spirit of Oswulf, the twin brother to the Lich. 
The staff glows with an eerie white light. My staff, the specter moans. Then it is time. My vigil will soon end. He continues, and he recorded his journal entry 56. Journal entry 56 says... <clears throat> as soon as I find it... Meeting with Oswulf. My hopes of keeping my brother from the world are crumbling with this ice. If the Dreadlord's evil cannot be contained, then it must be destroyed. I am reassured that the Silver Blades who come to finish what we started centuries ago. Please remember that it is the Lich and not my, un mis my misguided brother's soul that is evil. Upon your honor, I charge you with freeing his soul from the Lich's taint. I shall hold the gate here, but the Dreadlord may escape through another exit. You must succeed. A tear appears in the giant's in the great giant spirit's eye. You must succeed. I give you my weapons to help you on your mission. He points, and a soft blue glow grows behind a rock. Weapons slowly rise into view. May Tyre go with you. The party is one treasure! Ha ha! Sonia? Silver shield plus five! Ho ho! Silver longsword plus five! Ho ho! And that's where I'm gonna call it. Quit it us? Actually, yes. So, that has been an uh, excerpt of Secret of the Silver Blades! Ho ho! Uh, I'll probably be f doing the other half of this tomorrow at some point. Um, not sure when exactly. I and mean, this particular one did uh, about an hour and 45 minutes. So it's not very long. Um, once I get into the actual castle proper, which is the next area, I don't think it's much more than an hour tops. Uh, depends on how much uh, digging around and searching around for every single room that I go through. It's, it's A lot of it's optional. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to put this one to rest. So thank you for joining me. Um, this will be posted to YouTube. The links are down here on the bottom of the channel. And uh, have a good night. May the blessings of Tyre go with you.